Folks, thanks for joining us today. My name is John Dubas with Premier Marketing, and we'll be spending the next 50 minutes or so discussing programs that can really help not only drive your business now, because these are programs not subject to lock-in and we can write them now, but also a means to prep for the upcoming annual election period in the Medicare world and prep for business following that too. We need business each and every month. So today's presentation is being recorded and that presentation will be posted on our website at premiersmi.com and also on our YouTube channel and will be sent by email to everyone who has expressed interest in today's presentation as well. You'll notice as a bit of housekeeping that the software system has a section for you with both questions and chat. We'll ask that you put your questions in the questions section. We find that generally we do cover most of the inquiries through the course of the presentation, but we want to make certain that you have the data you need to make an informed decision as to what goes into your portfolio of products and how that offering can be best suited for you and your clientele. We'll start with a bit of level set for those of you that aren't as familiar with Premier Marketing. We are a national marketing organization founded in 1968 that's part of the Integrity Marketing Platform with offices across the country. We offer insurance services to the public through independent insurance agents such as yourself. And we do so through contracts that are at the highest possible commission levels with recruiting contracts available to those who qualify. That portfolio of products includes a full gambit of products for the senior population, the Medicare population. That includes the Medicare programs of Medicare Advantage, MedSUPS, standalone Part D programs, but also a full portfolio of life insurance and annuity products, including final expense life insurance and pre-need plans. We also include long-term and short-term care programs, disability income plans, and the ancillary benefits that really serve the purpose for our population that we serve. Those dental vision hearing programs, critical illness cancer plans, hospital indemnity programs, accident, and even telehealth programs are available through our organization. When we look at the Medicare Advantage plans, we have the national carriers for you to work with through our organization and many of the strong regional carriers that can make a difference for you in your market. And that same philosophy carries over into the standalone prescription drug arena where those national carriers are available to you, many times with the same contract that's part of the MA programs. When you look at Medicare supplements, a very vast portfolio of products that are available to you to make certain that we can handle the needs of the entire Medicare population, regardless of income or thoughts on network. We want to make certain also that we provide the tools that can help you be successful across that gambit of programs, and we'll talk about those uh, later on in the presentation. When we speak of the ancillary programs, these include the national leaders in each of these categories, and we are pleased that we have a guest with us today to speak to some of these that we'll introduce in just a moment. When you look at the Medicare market overall, and you look at it based just on age, you see a near exponential growth, the baby boomers coming into the Medicare population, the silver tsunami, one every 10 seconds, 10,000 plus a day, but if you look at the Medicare market based just on age, it's a little deceiving for you because we're seeing an increasing number of people who are eligible for Medicare and are deferring those benefits as they turn 65 for one reason or another. And the pandemic has, ex has uh, influenced that in both ways, actually. So we wanna make certain that we take into account that portion of the Medicare population that is actually under the age of 65 eligible for programs such as what we discussed today, it's a 15% of the population. So it's a very sizable number. And these are folks that many times have some challenges with their budgets as well. So having programs that can help with regular expenses that they know they're going to encounter and being able to handle them financially can make a big difference. Because hey, if you look at the population overall, including those under 65 and those that are 65 and older, you see two thirds of them have three plus chronic conditions and have some challenges with their income and assets. So we wanna make certain that we can help them regardless of the choices they make on their base coverages. Because hey, uh, an old sales manager of mine once said, the decision to make a decision is a decision. And that's true. I mean, folks don't have to do anything extra. 
with Medicare. They can actually even defer the Part B should they choose to do so. Most do not, but some will just pick up a standardized Medicare Part D program to help with the drug coverages and self-insure for the medical expenses, or they may pick up a standardized, modernized Medicare supplement program or bundle the benefits into a Part C program. In each of these categories, the programs we discussed today can make a major positive influence on their financial wherewithal to handle the common needs uh, that they'll encounter. What we're seeing as well is in many circumstances, the folks that are coming into original Medicare, be it at age 65 because of disability or the folks that are termed late to Medicare seniors, you're seeing a pretty even choice as to what they're picking as their base coverage moving in. Pretty even split between MA and MedSup programs. And you see a percentage of folks that are still classified as original Medicare only. These can be folks that are dual beneficiaries, the folks with both Medicare and Medicaid. It may be folks with retirement plans. It may be folks that are accessing benefits through the VA or as mentioned before, self-insuring. In each of these categories, the ancillary programs we discuss can be of great benefit to them. We also want to make certain that we're able to help you help your prospects and clients translate the language that is set upon them in the Medicare world. So one of the pieces you'll see in the follow-up is a link to a guide for the acronyms. I've been in this section of the world for 35 plus years now, and there's always an acronym where you kind of go, ooh, WWF, is that the organization that wrestles or is that the one that deals with animals? Well, we know what that is. The acronyms can guide can be very helpful for us. It's also important for us to note that folks on Medicare are not reviewing their coverages annually. So if we are able to access these folks, discover them, perhaps through a, a process of offering additional benefits through ancillary programs, we can also help them with their base coverages should they qualify for a special election period. And of course, at this time of the year, there's a lot of talk about next year's benefits already. So it enthuses a number of us to get out and press the flesh and help the folks that may not understand the benefits that they have versus the benefits they may be eligible for. Regardless of the commercials on television, they may not be eligible for every benefit under the world. And we wanna make certain we help them understand what they have and what they're el eligible for because they're having some challenges understanding it. And in all candidness, Many of them are not even using the information that's available through the government sites, the Medicare's official, official information resources on the plan finder. Well, they're not using them. So having different systems that can help disseminate that information to them can be very helpful. And you'll see how that works in just a little bit as well. Medicare does their best to help folks know what they have and what they don't have. Every October, they have an opportunity to receive the Medicare and You handbook. Everybody on Medicare does, either electronically or through snail mail. They have, of course, an app available for them that can help them discern what is covered and what is not. And then, of course, there's different material on the internet that they can use, put out, in this case, by the government in snippets that really can explain some of these benefits. But you'll note, this particular video on the website uh, or on, on the internet was put out in 2015, April of 2015. You've got about 61 million people on Medicare in that six year time period plus, less than 800,000 people have viewed it. And that's a really good video. It just goes to show, however, that folks aren't comprehending the material that's out there available to them or understanding it. We also wanna make certain that regardless of how they do or do not receive information that when we fill that void we're able to do it in the manner that they appreciate and they will actually use sometimes that means a face-to-face -face, uh, explanation sometimes that goes virtual either way having the tools to deliver that information can be very helpful and that's why working with carriers that have that capability to help you do that or with systems available through organizations like ours can make a big difference and helping you explain the benefits that your prospects and clients are eligible for. And let's face it, the last year and a half or so, 
folks have been trained on how to do things electronically, even if they hadn't in the past. There are a ton of people out there that are receiving that tutorial from a whole bunch of different services. They're doctors. Until recently, a whole bunch of those visits were all virtual, be it their primary care or specialist. There's a lot of prep work being done for, through host, for hospitals, through a virtual channel, at dentist as well. Even services to celebrate their faith have been done electronically. So they are becoming much more comfortable and adept at using these systems, having that information available through a system like this can be very, very helpful. And it helps us also then to put more complete packages of benefits together for our prospects and clients. And that helps us too. It helps a referral process. It helps with name recognition, but it also helps with retention and persistency. Studies have shown the more product you have in the house, the higher your persistency is going to be. And that's very important for us all. So what we've done today is ask our friends at Surebridge, Mr. Seth Groff, to come on and speak to us about how Surebridge can help us in approaching this market. Pardon me, a frog jumped in my throat there. And uh, how Surebridge can help us drive this business. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn control over to Mr. Groff and introduce him. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Seth? All right. Well, thanks, John. And thanks, everyone, for jumping on the call today. It's it's crazy that, you know, we're sitting here in August and AEP is going to be here before we know it. And I know that a lot of the carriers out there that um, are going to be releasing their product information and it's kind of a mad rush for everyone to, to get onboarded to sell those products. Well, the good news is, is while you're kind of sitting, wait for that information to come out, you can always still be selling ancillary products. So that's one of the great things about Surebridge's portfolio of ancillary products is not only can you sell them during that uh, AEP, um, you can also sell them years round. So what I tell people is now is when you want to make sure that you're contracted, familiarize yourself with these products and the process in order to enroll your clients so that when AEP does hit, you can hit the ground running and you're not scrambling um, to figure this stuff out uh, during a busy time of the year. So I'm excited as always. Um, we know we I love working with Premier and all the Premier agents. And so really look forward to the call today and uh, showing you how these ancillary products can make a difference in your uh in your clients' lives and also in your, your business. So if you're not familiar with Surebridge, um, I always like to first point out the name. You can see down there in the un lower right-hand corner that it's gonna be Surebridge underwritten by the Chesapeake Life Insurance Company. Surebridge is gonna be the marketing name. The Chesapeake Life Insurance Company is just the actual carrier that the, the, the that, that the insurance is through, um, we're one and the same, okay? You're gonna hear me refer to everything as Surebridge. However, it's important to know that distinction because when your client receives that policy in the mail, it will say the Chesapeake Life Insurance Company. But I always tell people that we're one of the fastest growing ancillary carriers in the marketplace. Um, to put things into perspective, in 2020, we issued over 280,000 policies and our underwriting team consists of two people. And so the only way that we can do that, issue that many policies with that little of staff, is to leverage technology. And so all of these products are going to be quoted for and applied online via a point of sale tool. You'll have several different signature options. You can do face-to-face, -face, email, voice, um, even tech signature. So depending on how tech savvy that client is, you're gonna be able to align one of those uh, with what their comfort level is. Um, when you look at our portfolio of products, you're gonna see some that are gonna be guaranteed issue, okay? Guaranteed issue means no health questions, no height, weight chart, just answer a few eligibility questions and you'll be good to go. You'll also see some products that are gonna be true simplified issue underwriting. Simplified issue underwriting in our world means that we're just gonna underwrite based on the questions on the application. So as long as they answer the questions truthfully and favorably, they're going to get issued. There's never an MIB. There's never a script check. There's never a phone interview. So these products are going to be easy for your clients to understand, easy for you to help them enroll in, 
and it's not going to uh, take that much more time uh, in addition to your, your presentation you're already making to add these products. So it's easy for everyone involved. And we also have a broad portfolio of products. So today we're really focused on the products that sell in the senior market, but you get access to all of these. And so whether you're selling in the under 65 or the over 65 market, uh, we, we're going to have something for you. And you might look at this screen and you say, whoa, Seth, that's a lot, right? Well, where should I get start? Well, you know, if you're in the senior market, you should start with the two products we're going to talk about today. Prime DVH and hospital wise. Um, but if you're also selling in the under 65 market, you know, might want to take a look at our critical illness. You might want to take a look at our accident companion. That's our number one accident selling plan. And then also the hospital wise and the DVH that we're going to talk about today. Um, the other thing that I like to point out about our portfolio is that you see that GI there. That's a, you know, one of them acronyms that John was uh, referring to earlier. And I know that as a industry, we, we, we sometimes use acronyms and forget to explain them but GI just stands for guaranteed issue okay so that means that any product up there that has GI in parentheses means that it has a guaranteed issue benefit maybe all benefit will be guaranteed issue like the dental plans or the accident plans or maybe just a small benefit will be available you know for example like with our critical illness plan there's a small GI benefit um, that's available but always like to point that out because I know that there's a lot of people out there that you know if they're going to sell ancillary products they don't want to have to you know answer the the qu health questions and so they just choose to go with the guaranteed issue products or the guaranteed issue benefit amount so um, what do you sell so you know, like I said up there, there's a lot on the screen there. And this, you know, this this uh, picture up here was kind of inspired by that diagram that John showed that your, you know, your your clients have a choice, right? And so you're leading them down a path to make sure they choose the right one. Well, generally speaking, if they're enrolling in MedSup, so they're going with the Part A, Part B, you generally speaking, Prime DVH is going to be a good product to look at. And if you opt to go down that other path where you're selling them a Med Advantage plan, generally speaking, hospital-wise is going to be a good fit for them. Um, we'll talk about some scenarios where, you know, if the MA plan doesn't have, uh, you know, comprehensive dental benefits, DVH will still be a good fit. But at the end of the day, if you're going down both paths or, you know, you just recommend what's best for the client based on their needs, well, the good news is uh, that, you you know, both these products are going to be able to, to be incorporated into your sales process. So um, the first product we're going to start, start off with is going to be Prime DVH. And DVH stands for Dental Vision hearing combo product. So we all know that a lot of people have dental insurance um, through their employer and then they retire, they hit Medicare age and you know if they're enrolling in part A and part B now they don't have uh, dental coverage. And so this is going to be a great product um, for there. And you can see up there that there's a lot of people out there that don't have dental coverage. Um, you know up there it says most people on Medicare do not have dental coverage. 65% I don't. So that means that chances are two out of three of your clients currently don't have dental insurance. And so there's plenty of people out there to talk about uh, these benefits too and educate them on it. You know, like I said earlier, a lot of times they have coverage through um, their employer, then they retire and they don't know what to do. Well, now you have a solution for those clients. And then also I always like to point out that there is still gonna be um, some, you know, Medicare Advantage uh, clients that are gonna need dental coverage as well. Um, this slide up here is a little bit old and you know each year more and more of these MA plans incorporate dental plans but what I always say is look at the Medicare Advantage plans you're, you're selling the ones that don't have dental coverage obviously a good fit and those that only have preventative coverage might be a good fit um, because our plan isn't going to coordinate so even if the basic cleaning is is covered maybe they want some coverage for a root canal um, or a crown or something of that nature then prime dvh would be a good fit for them as well but uh, so i i just like throw that up out there because i don't want you to rule out uh, medicare advantage enrollees just be advised that a lot of ma plans are starting to have dental benefits and you definitely don't want to over insure um, a client uh, but especially a senior client so when we're looking at dvh in the highlights remember that this is going to be a dental vision hearing combo product okay and when we were designing this product we went out we looked at the products in the marketplace we said okay what do we like about them and you know kind of copied that and then we said what don't we like about them and then we changed that and one of the things we noticed with a lot of the other dvh plans out there is that the preventative uh would be subject to a deductible so meaning that they would go 
to the dentist and maybe it's covered for day one at a hundred percent, but then they walk out of there, you know, with a $200 bill and a hundred dollar deductible. And so they're just, they didn't see the value in it with prime BVH. The preventative dental is covered at a hundred percent day one, no deductible. So you get this plan issued, you go to the dentist for that cleaning, that, that checkup and uh, the basic x-rays, zero out of pocket costs. So you're able to provide immediate value to that client. Also, vision and hearing exams are covered at 100% day one with no deductible. So you can go to the dentist, you can go to the optometrist and get your eyes checked, you can go to the audiologist, get your hearing checked, all with no out-of-pocket costs. So again, immediate true value, not getting hit with the deductible. Um, looking at some of the other services here, um, you know, the basic dental, th those no waiting periods for that. We'll talk about how that's going to pay out on another slide and even our major dental procedures. So again, that's like a root canal only has a nine, nine month wait. So very aggressive in the waiting periods for the basic and, and major. And you're going to see that uh, Premier is going to hook you up uh, with some great commissions. And you're going to see that these are also going to be uh, great uh, competitive premiums as well. And so, you know, people might say, hey, it's not worth uh, selling a dental. You know, it's not worth your time. Well, chances are you're probably only going to add maybe 10, 15 more minutes to the conversation and uh, you're going to get compensated very fairly for it. And then also we'll talk about the networks that are tied to these plans and also, you know, go over how out of network benefits work as well, because, you know, someone might go to a dentist that's not in network and you might be curious how, how that would would look at as well so looking at the nuts and bolts issue ages zero to 90 um, remember this is going to be renewable for life okay so if you write someone that's 90 they turn 91 they get to keep this plan okay um, you, you know this is going to be individual coverage uh, we do allow child primaries on this plan and so if you work that under 65 market or maybe you have a grandparent that wants to get it on their grandchild uh, we do allow uh child primaries on this which which is nice um, no health questions so guaranteed issue um, you know the two qualifying questions for this plan are you know you can't be incarcerated and then number two you have to meet one of our uh, resident requirements residency requirements but as long as those two things are in check um, your these plans are going to get issued and the way that it works is that you select a benefit amount of a thousand dollars fifteen hundred or two thousand OK, and all of the benefits are going to come out of that. OK, so the vision benefits come out of that and the hearing benefits come out of that. Um, so keep that in mind when you're selecting the benefit, because sometimes uh, some people think that the vision and hearing might be an addition and that's not going to be the case. Um, there is going to be a hundred dollar deductible and we'll, we'll talk about when that is applicable. Just remember that preventative and the uh, hearing and vision exams, that's not applicable, and we'll hit on the, the providers on the next couple slides. Um, looking at the dental benefits, um, you know, up here is just a summary of what's covered and where they fall. I always tell people to go out and download the product guide, okay? And so once you get appointed, you'll get access to the agent portal. You can go in there. There's going to be a product guide. Um, download that. And in that product guide, there's going to be sample policies, okay? And so that sample policy lists everything that's covered, also lists all the exclusions so you can know uh, what benefits um, falls where. Uh, the two questions I always get on this slide is, number one, are implants covered? No, implants are not covered. And then the second one is orthodontics, and no, orthodontics are not covered either. If you look at plants that cover those th two items, they're just going to be more expensive, and um, they have limited benefits for those anyways, and so we just uh, decided to uh, remove those, exclude those two things, um, so we could keep the cost down, but otherwise it aligns with most dental plans that you would be familiar with. So up on the screen is how the dental benefits gonna work. Um, preventative, we've already hit on this, no waiting period, 100%, um, and the deductible is not applicable. So uh, go get your teeth cleaned, uh, no out-of-pocket cost. Now, what if they come back and say, well, guess what, Seth, you uh, haven't been flossing real good and now you have a cavity. Well, the good news is there's still not a waiting period. So I can go back, you know, a week later and get that cavity fixed. Um, and, you know, uh, Sherbridge would cover 60% of it uh, year one, then 70% year two, and then 80% year three and beyond. And the deductible is applicable to the basic. 
Okay. Um, in the same fashion, they came back and said, you know, I needed a crown. Um, there is going to be a nine month wait for those major type services. Um, after that, though, for the remaining three months, it'd be covered at 60%, then starting year two, 70%, year three, uh, 80% there and beyond. And when you look at major services, you know, when you get bumped up to that 80% in year three, look at other dental plans out there. That's very uh, competitive um, for type three services. Um, so, you know, we really incentivize that client to keep this in force. Um, and we kind of, you know, uh, pay that higher percentage, uh, which if you look at other plans out there, uh, that's going to be very nice. And the deductible is applicable to the major services as well. Keep in mind, it's only one deductible per policy per policy year. So if you hit it with the basic services, you don't get hit again. Um, and that's uh, the same with like the vision and the hearing. It's only one for the entire policy. So if you hit it somewhere else, um, you don't have to pay it again. Now, um, we use what's called the Carrington Network um, for Prime DVH for the dental benefits. Um, I'll show you how to go out and look up providers here in a, a few more slides. But inevitably, somebody on the call today is saying, uh, Seth, you know, uh, I live in a small town or I got a client that goes to a dentist and he doesn't take any insurance or he's not in the Carrington Network. So how do out-of-network benefits work. And we wanted some rich um, out-of-network benefits for this plan as well. So we created what's called a passive network. And the way that a passive network works is that it still will pay the same percentage that's up on the screen, okay? So it's whatever the percentage up there, it's gonna pay the same. However, it is capped at the 75th percentile of usual and customary charges, okay? Now this is when I usually lose agents, okay? It's not 75% of usual and customary charges. It's capped at the 75th percentile of usual and customary charges. So the way that I explain it is that, again, it pays the same percentage that's up on the screen. However, if you had 100 dentists standing in a line and they all charged a different amount, right? If you went from dentist one through 75, you're good. It's gonna pay the same as if you went uh, in network. However, if you went to dentist 76 through 100, so they're the most expensive, you know, in the in the area, you're gonna be capped at what that 75th dentist uh, charges. So whatever that 75th dentist charge, then that's the percentage that would be applied to that amount and your client would be uh, responsible for everything over that. I'll be candid, unless your dentist is really, really expensive, the difference isn't all, all that much, um, especially on just, you know, simple stuff like uh, cavities and things of that nature. Uh, maybe for some of the more major, if they really are price gouging, um, but very competitive out of network as well. But as I mentioned, you know, Carrington Network, wide nationwide, you know, provider network, go in network whenever possible because you do also get some great discounts um, by being a part of the Carrington Network. So that's how the dental benefits work. Uh, looking at the hearing benefits, they can be used for that hearing exam, purchasing hearing aids, uh, repairs, or, or in addition, um, the hearing portion uses what's called the true hearing network. And I always tell people that this is one of the best parts of this plan, because if you look at what hearing aids cost, right, they're not uncommon, three, four thousand uh, dollars uh, each. And now, you know, you start throwing on a 30, 50, 60 percent discount on those. You're going to see some significant savings. So uh, true hearing discount you know, that alone provides some significant value to your client and definitely something you're going to want to talk about uh, when you're talking about the hearing benefit. Um, the vision benefit, eye exams, contact lenses, frames, uh, and, and, you know, making sure you can fit them, um, follow-up visits, things of that nature. The vision benefit is not tied to a network, okay? We wanted that client to be able to go to any vision provider that they want, they will have to settle up with that provider and then submit the claim directly to Surebridge for a reimbursement, okay? This causes some confusion. Um, so just remember the vision benefit, go to any provider you want, settle up with the provider, submit the claim, and we reimburse the client um, in a few days for any benefits uh, owed to them for, for going and seeing that, that optometrist. So looking at how the benefits work, um, vision exam, again, covered immediately, 100%, no deductible. Um, the hardware do pay attention that it does have that nine month wait. And I know that's a little strange, but we did have to you know, provide a little bit of protection from um, anti-selection. Um, so there is a nine month wait for that hardware, but then covered at 60%, 70% and 80%. Um, there is gonna be a $200 cap for the vision benefits. So even if they have you know, $1,500 benefit, only $200 of it can be allocated 
towards that vision benefit. So once you hit that vision benefit, um, you, you're, you're going to be done. Um, hearing exam, go, or excuse me, hearing benefits going to be very similar. Um, you know, we mentioned the exam is covered immediately. Uh, no deductible. Uh, the hardware, again, has that nine-month wait, then 60, 70, 80, and the deductible is applicable, but remember, only one, app, one deductible per policy per policy year, so if they've hit it for anything else, they don't get hit with it again, and the hearing benefit is capped at $500 every two years, and the reason we did that is um, obviously people don't buy hearing aids every year, um, and so they kind of get that larger benefit, uh, and then they just wait a couple years and they could, they'd be eligible for, for that benefit again. So just keep in mind that these, uh, those benefits do come out of the maximum benefit amount, and they would be capped at that. Um, if they wanted to use it all for dental, they could, so they don't have to use the vision or the hearing benefit, um, but if they do choose, it would be subject to those um, limitations. So um, up on the screen there are going to be some uh, sample premiums. What I like to point out on this slide is that they are issue age premiums. What that means is that once you're locked into an age band, you're going to pay that age band premium. So if you're working that turn in 65 market, there's definitely some incentive for them to purchase it, get that locked in, because if they wait till they're 66, they're going to jump up in that age band and have to pay that rate for the remainder of their uh, policy. Now, if you want to upgrade a benefit, you have to do so on the policy anniversary. Um, that's the only time you can you can do it um, is on the policy anniversary. So you have to just go out and make that request, you know, 30, 60 days ahead of time of your policy anniversary, then it'll take effect there. Um, do be advised that if you do increase the benefit, you will be charged at your current uh, age at that time. So, you know, you're, if you're working that turn 65 market, make sure you get them aligned with the benefit they want. Don't try to sandbag until they have um, coverage or, you know, some major stuff that they need because they will have to pay that higher rate um, when, when they upgrade based on, on what age band uh, they fall into. Will the client receive an ID card? Um, if you're working only with clients that are 65 or older, the answer is yes. They will always receive an ID card in the mail. If you're working 64 or younger, the answer is it depends on a question you have to answer on the application. On the app, it says, do you consent to electronic delivery? If you answer that question, no, you do not consent, then you will always receive an ID card in the mail. If you answer that question, yes, then we will send you information electronically via email on how to access it. So in my opinion, and I'm sure that if operations was on here, they'd get mad at me, but in my opinion, if you're selling these dental plans, just answer that question, no, so they get the card in the mail, that's what they want uh, in most situations, unless they're really, you know, conscious about earth and don't want it, but then they have to print it off anyways at home. So uh, I just always answer, tell people to answer that question, no, then they'll get it um, in the mail. Um, how to find a provider? You want to go out to www.chesapeakplus.com. Okay, so you definitely want to write that down or, or you know, uh, John will probably send out the slides afterwards so that you have that. But go out here and write down here. You can see where it says find a dental provider or find a hearing provider. So go out there, enter the zip code, um, and I'll show providers uh, based on the other criteria that you select. Do not get confused about this find a vision provider. I know that's a little confusing, confusing because we're talking about DVH. That's not for the vision benefit. Remember, vision benefit for prime DVH is always going to be a reimbursement. This is for a standalone vision plan that we have. So don't get confused there. Um, sometimes that does cause confusion. Also up here, you can do a lot of good stuff. For example, um, if they don't want to wait for their ID card in the mail, you can come out here and get an ID card. They can change payment. Um, they can change mailing address, even cancel their policies. So a lot of self-service stuff out here that either you or the client can do. And you don't have to register for the website. All you do is click on that link, enter in the policy number and some other uh, information like your agent code and, and you'll be uh, up and running. So what should the client say when using the card? When you go to the dentist, instruct your client to say the Carrington Network. OK, they say Surebridge or Chesapeake Life. It might cause some confusion and they might not know who we are. Um, they're going to be familiar with Carrington. That's who's going to process the claim. So just say the Carrington Network um, when, when going to the dentist. When going to the audiologist, say true hearing. That's what they're going to be familiar with. And uh, candidly, if you're you going to the optometrist, I don't even recommend showing the card because uh, it's going to be a reimbursement benefit anyways. And so once you get that uh, bill, you just submit the bill as a claim and be reimbursed. Uh, the dentist will file the claim, um, especially if you go in network. If you go out of network, they usually still do. Some don't. 
Um, but even if your dentist doesn't file the claim, you're still eligible for benefits. Um, but generally speaking, the dentist will file that claim. Uh, same is true with True Hearing. Uh, they'll file the claim for you. Uh, vision, the client's going to have to file that, right? Remember, vision is the reimbursement. I know I've hit that three times, but that's kind of that secret <laughs> number. So just remember, vision, reimbursement, so the client's going to have to file that, that benefit. Um, John earlier was talking about the Medicare and You handbook and, you know, all the great uh, material that the government provides uh, to, uh, you know, everyone Medicare age. And I always say, you know, you know, John kind of said, you know, let the let the government educate them. I say let the government sell for them. Right. They're going to have a copy of this or let the government sell for you. Rather, um, they're going to receive this uh, this in the mail or electronically. And you can flip to this page right here in that book where it says what's not covered by Part A and Part B. And it says right here, Part A and Part B, if you're enrolling, does not cover most dental care. It does not cover eye exams. It does not cover dentures and it does not cover hearing aids and exams for fitting them. So you can flip right here to this page and just say, hey, I'm not sure if you had these benefits through your employer earlier, um, but you might be losing them. And I just wanted to let you know that Medicare Part A and Part B do not cover them. However, we do have a standalone plan um, that we can take a look at that might provide a more cost effective way for you to receive dental care go get your eyes checked, get some new glasses and get hearing aids if you if you need them. And so this page right here has sold more DDH um, than any other sales concept that I can come up with. So just flip to this page and, and it's gonna help you sell more um, dental vision hearing products. The second best sales technique, and maybe the best in the under 65 market is just ask the question, are you currently going to the dentist? Because if they come back and they say, no, I'm not going to the dentist, you say, is that something that interests you? And they say, yeah, I should probably go to the dentist. You say, OK, let me show you a cost effective way to pay for your dental care. Right. Real easy to have that conversation. Now, if they come back and they say that they are going to the dentist, your follow up question is, are you paying for that out of pocket or are you using insurance? And if they come back and they say, well, unfortunately, I just paying for it out of pocket. You say, oh, well, let me show you a more cost effective way to pay for your dental care. And then you can go through and show, sh sh talk about Prime DVH. If you ask that question and they come back and they say that they are going to the dentist and they are using insurance, then your follow up question is going to be, does your current plan also have vision and hearing benefits? Chances are it doesn't. And so then you can have a conversation there. And even if they come back and they do have vision and hearing benefits, you just can always fall back on, oh, would you like me to review your coverage and see if there's a better option for your particular scenario? So asking this question, regardless of how they come back, is always going to help you um, sell more DVH. And then the final you know, sales concept that I have is know your numbers, right? Um, the Probably the biggest objection I get from not clients, but from, from agents um, actually is, you know, they just don't see the value in dental insurance, right? Because you're paying, maybe you're paying $500, you know, 400, $300, $400, dollars for premiums for only insuring, you know, $1,500 of risk. So it's kind of like, what's the point, right? You could self-insure. Well, first of all, statistically, people go to the dentist uh, more often uh, when they actually have insurance, number one. Number two, they're also going to be healthier when they are going to the dentist if they're not. So the point is, if you have to overcome that objection, um, just show them what it costs, right? Show them what, you know, up here on the screen, these, these would all fall under um, the preventative benefits. So these would all be covered at 100% day one, no deductible, and it's a $303 value based on the zip code here in Nebraska. So, you know, go to that dentist and you immediately get um, $300 worth of value. And uh, so you're recoup recouping a lot of what you've uh, paid into premiums. So um, I just always point that out because, you know, dental insurance is a little different than a lot of other insurance in that it provides immediate value um, where most other insurance is just protecting against catastrophic risk. Right. And so just, you know, point that out that, hey, you're going to be able to go get uh, this cleaning with no additional out of pocket costs. And so that's a great thing to point out. So that's Prime DVH. Um, you know, if there's one product in my portfolio that you should bring up in every conversation that you're having, regardless if you're over 65, under 65, life insurance, property and casualty, I don't care. Just ask if they're currently going to the dentist and you're gonna sell uh, uh, probably some dental plans. It's, uh, it's an easy product to sell because consumers are familiar with it and they are looking for it. So um, just like to throw that out there. 
Um, the next plan we're going to take a look at is going to be hospital wise. And, um, you know, if we, and this is primarily going to be sold in conjunction with Medicare Advantage plans. Um, we know that when clients go to Medicare Advantage, um, sometimes, uh, you know, they might pay a lower premium. Um, however, it's going to have some additional risk. And so you have to have conversations with them about how they're going to pay for those additional risks um, that come in the form of uh, financial risks that come in the form of, of co-pays. And hospital-wise is going to be a solution um, for those scenarios because we're going to be able to dial this in to align with those copays. So up on the screen here, um, just some stats. You know, that one, more and more people are enrolling in Medicare Advantage plans every year. You know, it's funny. I walk, talk to a lot of people that work in the senior market and I ask, you know, are you doing SUPS or MA plans? And they're a little bit of both. And that the percentage is starting to change drastically, right? It used to be maybe 10% MA plans. Now people are, you know, doing all the way up 70% MA plans or even 100%. Some of them are. So uh, more and more people doing it. So plenty of people out there that are interested in these concepts. Um, the out-of-pocket uh, limit, the averages you can see up there uh, for in-network is just south of $5,000. Always point that out because, you know, your clients are probably on a limited budget in the senior market. And so they might not be able to write a check for $5,000 um, or if they can, might uh, tap into savings that they were hoping to use for something else. So uh, definitely a financial risk there. And the third stat there, just if you end up in the hospital, you're going to be walking out with some bills, um, even if you have insurance. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. Um, this is, is pretty interesting. Um, this just kind of shows that uh, half of all Medicare Advantage enrollees, enrollees would incur higher costs than beneficiaries on Medicare, uh, on traditional Medicare. And so really the longer they're in the hospital with that MA plan, the more of a risk um, they face, um, you know, compared to just a traditional med sub. So I always like to throw this out there that kind of reinforces the risks associated with going with that MA plan. Um, but, you know, up on the screen here, Issue ages zero to 90. Um, again, once you get this locked in, you get to keep it. Um, it's gonna be simplified underwriting. So there are gonna be some health questions that you have to uh, ask your client uh, on the application. Um, but remember no MIB, no script check, no phone interview. Um, there is a individual and spouse rate structure. So if you enroll both the husband and wife, you do get a little bit of a, a discount there. Um, pre X six month look back for the first six months of the plan. Um, so if they're treated or diagnosed with something six months leading up to purchasing the policy, they would not be covered for the first six months of the plan um, once it's issued. Um, outside of that, there's no waiting periods, um, you know, accidents covered immediately, obviously, and um, but do be advised of that uh, pre-X. And then there is a one-time application fee, um, but there's only one app fee per policy. And so if you're, or excuse me, per application. So if you're enrolling multiple people or multiple products, it's only going to be one app fee. Prime DVH, the product we just covered, does not have an app fee. So that's not going to be an issue um, with, with, with that one. Um, but, you know, looking at the base benefit, basically you select your daily benefit amount that you're going to receive for each day you're in the hospital. Select the, the benefit period, 3, 6, 10, 21, 180, 365. You receive that benefit um, for each day you're in the hospital uh, until your uh, benefit period is, is over. There is a 90-day reset um, if you exceed your benefit period, so, so keep that in mind as well. Um, observation benefit pays the same as if you're confined in the hospital uh, for hitting 12 hours of uh, observation. So, you know, a lot of times doctors hold them for observation. And if that's the case uh, at 12 hours, they're going to get it. Uh, mental nervous also built in up to 250 for a maximum of seven days per year for confinement due to a mental nervous disorder, which in a lot of HIP plans out there, that's excluded. Um, I'm going to hit on the riders, but primarily just the ones that will, will be applicable um, for that senior market. Um, lump sum hospital confinement rider, that's typically sold in the under 65 market, just pays that lump sum first time they're uh, confined to the hospital. Um, usually what you see, you're not going to do that. You're just going to align the daily benefit uh, with what their exposure is with that MA plan. Outpatient surgery rider pays that benefit uh, if they have outpatient surgery for sickness or injury. This is one you're going to want to take a look at, um, as is the skilled nursing facility rider that pays that daily benefit. Um, each day they're in the nursing facility following uh, hospitalization. You know, a lot of MA plans kind of have that gap there for days 21 through 100, so you can align that um, just with that benefit period there. 
emergency care rider, definitely one you're, you're gonna wanna take a look at, not contingent on hospitalization, but they do have to visit an ER. But if they go to that ER for sickness or injury, they're going to uh, get that benefit. Ambulance rider, one you're gonna wanna take a look at as well. A lot of times there's a copay with the ambulance rider as is a uh, copay with the outpatient diagnostic rider that pays that benefit for any of those exams. There is a wellness rider, but I don't recommend selling it. You just get kind of exchange in dollars there. It's it's a little expensive in, in my opinion. But if you're selling it in the over 65 market, here's how you're gonna sell it, right? Over on the left-hand side here is going to be the Med Advantage plan. You can see all of the gaps here. Um, or the co-pays that are associated with it. And then over here, you can see that we really customized this, this to align with all of these out-of-pocket exposures. So we did six day, $300 a day. Remember, this does not coordinate with the plan. And so, you know, even though they're only responsible for 285, we're still paying them 300. Um, and then we lined up the uh, copay for outpatient surgery. We did $200 uh, for the emergency care rider just because it's so inexpensive. Ambulance service lined that up. Nursing facility did $200 a day for days 21 through 100. And they did $200 for a diagnostic uh, exam rider. So we did all of this for $54.04 a month. And you, you can see we, we provided good protection so they don't have to pay those costs um, themselves. Now, um, if you're not selling that particular plan, I always like to point out that we will make it easy for you to uh, quote these. So we have a tool that's called the Hospital Senior Plan Builder. What this does is it allows you to uh, select uh, the MA plans you are selling. So you can see here, I did a 2021 United Healthcare uh, plan right here. It showed all of the, the co-pays that are responsible, and then it made a recommendation for the hospital wise. And if this all looks good, you say, look, here's your exposure. Here's a possible solution. Would you be in interested in seeing what it's, they cost? They say, yeah, let's see what it costs. You click update selected plans and it's actually gonna quote, quote it for you um, in our software. So, um, you know, that's a great easy way for you to uh, sell these plans. And so definitely a tool that I recommend using. We have it built in right there in our software. So then you just click updated selected plans and it will actually quote it for you. Up on the screen there, those are going to be the knockout uh, conditions. And so for this plan, remember that it is simplified underwriting. So these would be uh, knockouts. Um, also, the questions on the application are going to walk you right through all this. Um, so keep that in mind as well. But you can use this as a cheat sheet or they are also in the product guide, um, which I mentioned earlier. Really, my four sales tips with this plan. Number one, utilize the hospital wise senior plan builder. I'm telling you, if you lay that out there, show them what their co-pays are and a solution to it, you're gonna sell some, right? Um, number two, customize that plan, okay? Don't try to do it one size fits all, um, dial that in. Um, number three, keep the premiums in their budget. You know, I hear a wide range on this. I hear people trying to keep it between 30 and 40. I see, hear people trying to keep it between 40 and 50. I hear people trying to call, keep it between 50 and 60. Um, usually to cover everything, you're probably looking more at 50 to 60. You get much over 60, uh, we don't see real good persistency. So I usually tell people try to keep it under 60. Um, and, um, you know, also something's better than nothing, right? So if they come back and they say it's too expensive, start dialing down the benefits, right? Maybe only do, you know, half the amount that they're responsible for or something like that. And then finally, just be ready to pivot. Um, okay, you know, if they say no, you say, great, get your MA sell and and move on you did your job on educating them so obviously never do the do a hard sell just you know educate them on them and you should be good to go so with that john that's what i had prepared for today's presentation so i will turn it back over to you if there are any questions and uh, thank you seth there is uh, one that pops up pretty consistently and it's on this one as well and it's the age spectrum that we deal with and the question asks, what happens if someone turns 90 while on plan since the plan is not offered to someone as a new program over that age? Yep, they get to keep it. Um, they get they get to keep the plan. Um, so now, obviously, if for some reason it lapsed um, and, you know, it was, they were outside their grace period, they wouldn't be able to re-enroll. But um, these plans, if they're issued, um, they get to keep it when they're out of, the, out of those issue ages. Awesome. Another question is, these plans, do they work with other programs that are in place from the presentation? It doesn't appear to be so, but uh, um, how does that work? How are yeah, they the, paid? Yeah, the plans we, we showed today do not coordinate benefits, okay? 
So even if they have like, you know, if, if, if it's paid, we, we don't coordinate benefits. So we're always going to pay. Um, you know, if they submitted a dental claim, I'll just use this say for an example, if they submitted a dental claim um, through their MA plan, they could come back, submit the same bill to us, and we're going to pay, pay the client. So we don't coordinate benefits. We're always going to pay um, uh, them. Most of our plans are that way. The two we talked about today are, are 100% uh, don't coordinate. Okay. And the last question, payment of commissions, when does that occur? So if, if you're set up so that uh, Surebridge uh, pays you, um, which is how Premier usually sets all of you up, uh, we pay twice a week. Awesome. I think that's a big point too when we talk about uh, these programs working with MA programs as we get into AEP, none of the MA carriers are allowed to pay an agent until after the first of the year. So this is a great way to help with the valleys and peaks of commissions moving forward. So yeah, awesome. yeah. I'll just add to that. So we we do um, we do draft the premium immediately on these plans, the first month's premium. So as John said, you know, you write this, um, you know, November first, and uh, it doesn't have an effective date until the first. You still get paid um, there. So um, it's a good thing to create some income during a busy time of year when you're when you're working really hard. Yep. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Seth. We'll close out with just a few slides um, as to some of the support that you can get from us here at Premier. Um, one of the things that we're able to do is help you consolidate your contracting information through a, a program called Surance Bay, where you set up an agent profile. This allows you to contract with multiple carriers easily and electronically. Many of the carriers, if they have their own electronic system, will defer to that, um, but this is a good place to put your E&O answer the questions that are commonly asked on contracts and things of that nature so you have it all in one place secure for your use. We also offer discounted errors and admissions coverage for uh, qualified agents. What makes you a qualified agent? Well, you got a contract with us, but this is a program that you own. So it's not like being added to a blanket E&O policy that covers you for just one product. This is yours that satisfies that contracting requirement that most insurance carriers require now, and it's yours uh, as your own program. We also offer discounted continuing education programs through our association with WebCE, so you can keep your license in play, and you can add to your own benefit package through a modified guarantee issued DI policy in which you're paid a commission on a program for yourself. A great way to add to your own benefit package that as an independent agent, yeah, well, that's your responsibility to, to cover yourself. Much as where today's presentation is being recorded, we've recorded past presentations as well. We have a program in there as well that, that Steph kind of alluded to when you look at the Medicare and You book, and it refers to how to sell for product that Medicare doesn't cover, which in many cases people assume coverage is there. It also gives you information on different marketing techniques. Um, today's world has you in a position where you can present both virtually and face-to-face -face with different seminars. And we have different programs that can help you approach those centers of influence in the community, such as providers, uh, uh, senior centers, churches, things of that nature, to put your message out into the community to get in front of folks that are in a position to buy from you uh, the programs that you offer. We do also offer complimentary access to Medicare Center. And this is a program that has three quoting engines in it, accessible through an all-in-one universal login from any device. It has a CRM in there for your use, private for you only. We don't harvest that information, but it gives you access of sending out comparisons for MA products. Also, uh, the compliance work that you need to do before you start discussing those programs. So collecting that scope of appointment by email or by text is there for you. Three quote engines powered by Connecture, Sunfire, and CSG. And those programs also have cross-selling techniques available for you. The CSG tool in, has a really cool feature that if you go in a household, their base coverage, let's say as an MA product here in the Dallas market, United has about 70% of the market. You go in there and they're not changing their base program. But as Seth mentioned, you have those copayments for the hospitalization piece of it. There is a fill in the hole 
kind of uh, scenario here that can help you explain the hospital indemnity programs and quote them right through this system. Much as where uh, compensation can be a real game changer for you, the incentives that different programs offer are also important for you as well. So we have a place on our website that has all that information gathered for you. Obviously, MA and PDP programs with their compensation package set by the government, well, that doesn't change, but these ancillary programs, Medicare supplement programs, in many cases have trips and incentives available, and we wanna make certain that you know of all the compensation that is due to you because it helps you qualify for premier marketing incentives as well. Uh, it, traditionally, that's been a cruise uh, because of the current situation that turned into cash in the pockets of many agents that qualified. We do help put you in front of folks too through call lists that are set up for you, uh, training programs and accessibility through different centers of influence, including retail marketing programs, faith-based opportunities, marketing with providers, and there are different carriers in the MA world that will help you out with lead programs as well. If you've done business with them, it's a great source for you to then circle back and make certain that you're covering them completely with ancillary programs. We do offer internet leads and direct mail support programs. That mail is based on production, but it deeply discounts the cost of that system so you can do it consistently and as Monty Python said in one of their movies, I'm not dead yet. Well, neither is direct mail. It's a consistent way of getting in front of people. If you do it on a regular basis, it's like an exercise program. You kick it in once or twice, you feel the pain, you do it consistently, you're gonna see the results. We offer those programs through preferred lead vendors because we work hand in hand with them to make certain that the correspondence that goes out is not only effective, but also compliant. We wanna make certain we take care of you. And as you notice, there are two different programs. You can qualify for health-based programs and through final expense production as well. It is a really cool system that many of these vendors have that give you an opportunity to directly access those leads as they come in. So you get them when they're the hottest, you recognize that the folks that actually responded will remember they do so, and it gives you an opportunity to take care and take advantage of uh, those responses. We do also have a couple of programs that come into play that help with direct mail responses themselves. You don't control the entire campaign, but these programs are for untouched direct mail responses. They vary in cost by region and by time, simply laws, supply and demand, but they can be very effective for folks who want to carefully monitor their budget or fill in holes in some of their marketing efforts that aren't responding as well as they thought they might. The internet lead programs that we have are based through Facebook, and we have two separate programs with different costs for final expense and Medicare in this arena as well. All this said and done, we work with these programs because we want your business. We want to make certain that we're able to not only deliver contracts, but also the support that you need to help those be effective. I'm gonna check questions really quickly before we close out. Um, Susan asked uh, the coordination program, Seth addressed that, um, the AIDS program, and programs that are available in all states, specifically in Connecticut. We're gonna make certain that we have uh, the grid of where these programs are available to you as part of the follow-up as well. Long way of saying, Susan, I don't have an answer to that off the top of my head with Connecticut. And so we're gonna make certain we get you that answer. All that said and done, I think it's important at this point in time in the year where many agents, if they're active in the Medicare market, particularly with Medicare Advantage programs, they have a lot of challenges with the different certifications and other things taking a bunch of their time. At this point in time, it's important for us to note that these programs are easily contract, are, are, are easy to contract with, they're easy to present, and they don't require the certification and some of the other time commitment that you have with the MA or PDP programs. It's important to know the plans. It's important to know what you're talking about, but there's no formal certification process that you have to go through in order to offer the portfolio. It's basically a choice. Are you gonna offer this to your prospects and clients? And I'm gonna confess, 
if you don't, someone else will. I hate hearing that time and time again. Well, if I'm not going to do it, someone else will. Well, it actually happens here. We want to make certain this is part of your portfolio. You decide to be active in this market. And it's a great way for you to, to fill your uh, channel of come up upcoming prospects. It took me a while to say that. Uh, I don't know why, but you'll see in many of these cases a premium difference between 64 and 65, a great way to pre sell and build your T65 market. All that said and done, we want to thank you for coming on and investing the time with us here today. We want to thank those of you that have done business with us in the past, those of you that are about to do so. Uh, we sincerely appreciate it and want to make certain that we can help you in any means that we can. Watch for the follow-up that will come out uh, as soon as our recording updates. Uh, watch for that recording available on our website and our YouTube channel as well. And we will have folks reaching out to you to see if we can answer any questions that you may have um, in this arena. All that said and done, Seth, thank you for your help today. Folks, thank you for the investment of your time so far. And we look forward to speaking with you down the road. And until that time, we wish you good selling. Thanks so very much. We'll talk to you soon.